Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video tutorial is for this really cute and super pretty bag called the Heartbreaker Crossbody Bag and Backpack by KS Kona Designs. This bag does come in the crossback bag backpack size, but there is also a smaller size, which is a wristlet. The construction is still the same, except for you're adding a wristlet instead. You could make both of these and have a nice little set. So say you just want to have the crossbody bag with you, but then you're, you know, heading out for lunch, say you're at work and you just want to bring the wristlet. You have everything you need in your wristlet to go grab your lunch or if a student, anything, you just have the little wristlet with you. So you can make a really pretty little set. So let's discuss some of the features. First, as you can see, it is a heart shape. You have the crossbody strap option, and I like crossbody straps because you can tighten them and still wear it as a shoulder bag. You then have the backpack option, so you unclip the crossbody strap. Now, you don't have to do the crossbody straps and the backpack strap. You can choose to do one. I just did both to be able to show you in the tutorial how it looks and how it goes together. So you slide the strap through this back loop and you clip them up to these D-rings at the top here. And I still need to press my bag. I just finished so I still need to give it a good press with some clips and hold it in place. But that's how it looks when you're going to wear it as a backpack. Just like that. How cute, eh? Oh my goodness. Love it. So then we have the zipper closure on the top here. When we unzip our zipper and you open up the bag, inside we have this zipper pocket. And then we have the bag. So roomy enough for your wallet, cell phone keys, anything you need to put inside. It is finished with binding, but I promise it's really not that difficult. I walk you through the steps and give you little extra tips and tricks there's also a link below in the description for doing binding, but we do attach the binding. I love binding because it does give like a skeleton shape, so it gives it like a bone and it helps hold it and help hold the bag shape. So I really do enjoy binding. We will get this closed. Oh, and I wanted to mention something that I really love is on the overlay, there's this cute little heart that was cut with it. And our connectors are also heart shape, right here. All the little details. This bag can be made out of a wide variety of materials. So for this tutorial, I used this vinyl faux leather, which is embossed. I just thought it was too perfect. I needed to use it for this bag. So I used this faux leather, which also had a backing already attached to it, so a fusible fleece. So my bag is a little bit squishier. However, if you want, you can add the main stabilizer if you want. I kept it off because I just didn't want to have to have all that extra stabilizer and bulk on this bag. So I used the faux leather for the exterior. I made my strap instead of using webbing. And as I mentioned when I made this, there will be a link below for how to make the strap. I also used quilting cotton for the exterior and interfaced that. But you can make this in a wide variety of materials. So there's vinyl, cork, faux leather, canvas, anything you want, have fun with this. This pattern also comes with an overlay here to put on the edge so it frames it and then some drippy. So you can really have a lot of fun with this bag. You can leave all that off like I did and just have it a little more simple, but I have the embossed hearts. You can do some embroidery on here, some heat transfer vinyl. There's so many options. Just let your creativity run wild with this. This is such a fun bag and honestly, it doesn't take that long to sew. My tutorials are always a little bit longer than it will take to sew because I go into so much detail and I'm really showing all the steps. So that's why the tutorials are a little bit longer, but I promise this really doesn't take long to sew. You'll be really happy when you make this and see that it only will take you a few hours or just an afternoon. So this again is the Heartbreaker Crossbody Bag Backpack by KS Kona Designs. So let's get started making our bag. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is very important because oftentimes designers give information about interfacing or sometimes pattern pieces can be cut differently depending on materials you're using or they just give different options for making the bag differently. So you'll want to read through the pattern to make notes of those adjustments. 
Once you've read through the entire pattern, you can then go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. I have gone ahead and cut out all my pattern pieces and I, then I cut them out of fabrics that I'm using, or materials, sorry, that I'm using. And I've fused my interfacings as well. So you can see here that I have my interfacing fused to my lining pieces. I've cut out all my pieces. Because I've read ahead, I've also gone and made some marks that need to be made on the pattern pieces. And it may be a little bit hard to see on this one, but I've made some marks here for this piece. So I've gone ahead and made those marks. I've also marked the centers of pieces that need the centers marked. So I've gone ahead and done that as well. And I cut my zippers to the length I'm going to need because again, I did read through the pattern and I did see what length they need to be cut. I also chose to do this zipper overlay. How sweet is that with the little heart? It's so sweet. So I've also gone ahead and chosen to do that zipper overlay. So I've cut that out and I did use my Cricut because there are SVGs for this pattern, which are extremely helpful when cutting pattern pieces such as these connectors because they are hearts. So it's really nice because you get the same cut for each piece and they all line up beautifully. And then it also cut this out for me as well. So I'm also going to be using a uh, strap that I have made myself. I don't have the webbing, so I've made the strap myself. I will link to a tutorial below that I have on my YouTube channel for how I make this strap. So I walk you through how to make a crossbody strap or handles if a pattern calls for webbing. So I'm using this instead of webbing. And also I've gone ahead and made marks, I'm trying to find the pattern piece, there it is, the pattern pieces for what pattern piece it is. So the corresponding letter, and I couldn't write it on these ones, that's why, because the material I'm using is a vinyl and it already has the interfacing attached, so it already has a fleece attached. So I'm not using any interfacing stabilizers for my main body and my gusset because I do have this fleece already attached and I'm trying to keep this as thin as possible because this needs to be domestic friendly for my machine to sew. And speaking of domestic friendly and machine to sew, always, always, always use materials, interfacings, threads, needles, etc. that are best for your machine. You know your machine the best, you know what your machine can handle, so definitely stick to materials that you know your machine can handle. If your machine struggles with bulk, don't use materials that are going to be really thick and give you a really hard time. Another tip is if your machine is struggling a little bit with the bulk, you can always switch to a bigger needle or try a walking foot. Or I like to use a hammer and flatten those seams with a hammer, but put a, a scrap piece of the fabric or a towel or something between your hammer and your bag so you don't cause any damage marks on your bag while you're hammering away. The rubber mallets work, but I like a hammer because it's nice and heavy and it really whacks those seams. So once you have all your pattern pieces cut and all your pattern pieces labeled and all your marks made that you need, we can get started on making our bag. First step is to make a crossbody strap. And as I mentioned, I'm not using webbing because I didn't have any webbing and the only webbing I did have was solid black and I really didn't want a solid black on, as you saw, a whole pink bag. So this is where you need to decide what bag you're making. And for this tutorial, I'm making the backpack bag. But the nice thing about that is it uh, can be used for the crossbody strap as well. So I'm going to be showing you how to attach the backpack connectors and the crossbody strap connectors. So that's, I'm going to just use this strap for both. So I chose the longer length to make my strap. So for this, we need our strap. If you're using webbing, you're webbing, your two swivel hooks, and your slider. What we will do first is we will take our slider, and your slider may look a little bit different, but they all have that center bar, and you're going to fish the end of the strap through the slider, so between the first bar and the middle bar, then down over the middle bar, and it'll look just like that. Once you have that done, you're then going to clip it in place. And this is where you can either sew a box here with an X in it or rivet this. I'm going to rivet this, but I'm going to do this after I have everything all done. So now that I have that attached, I'm then going to slide my slider and I'm going to find the exterior side of my strap. 
I'm going to slide my slider on so that the swivel, or not slider, swivel hook, sorry, the swivel hook on so that it is against the table, meaning it will be on the side that is on the exterior side of my strap. Fish that through, bring the short loose end all the way back up to my slider. Again, slide this between the first bar and the middle bar, slide it up, then bring it back down over the middle bar and you have something that will look like this. So you have your first strap that you attached, the first half of the strap that you attached in the middle, and then the one we're doing now, the side. Now put your slider so it is against the table because this is the wrong side or what I call the wrong side of the strap so that you find what side is the right side and what side is the wrong side. Again with your swivel hook, swivel hook against the table, slide that on to your strap and then fold your strap over. And there is a measurement in the pattern for how far you're going to slide these or loop these over the hardware. So you'll want to refer to that. You'll clip it in place and then you can either sew or add your rivet or Chicago screw. So I'm going to go add my rivets and then I'll come back and I'll show you how this looks when it's finished. So there you have it. I've attached my rivets to my strap instead of sewing. So that's how they look with the rivets attached. And now we have a fully functional crossbody strap with the slider attached. I'm just folding it in half so you can see it on camera. So now that that's done, we can put this to the side. We're going to move on with the next step, which is with the zipper gusset. So we now need our zipper gusset B piece and you want the exterior mark or the exterior piece sorry and on the exterior there are some marks we need to make on the pattern so you'll want to refer to the pattern for that for the marks that you need to make. You'll have these connectors so these are the connectors here and you want to slide your D-rings onto them. But before you do that, for these connectors, you need to glue them together. So there's two pieces and we're gluing them together. Now, I didn't want to glue, so what I did was I just used some double-sided tape to hold them together temporarily while we're waiting to sew them to the bag. So I've used some double-sided tape. So now that they're glued together, we can stitch just this straight edge here and don't back stitch leave long tails and we're going to pull them through and tie them off to the back now the back side will be the side that is going to be inside when these are folded together and another tip is if you want some extra security in the middle of these before you tape them or glue them together you can add a piece of interfacing so maybe Decoville light Decker bond in between just to add a little bit of strength to that when you're using them on your bag I'm just going to pull my long tails so long tails and I'm going to stitch these two short ed these two straight short edges here on this pattern piece here so i'm just stitching there again no back stitching so just stitch long tails as long as you can and then stitch the other side. And I try to start and stop approximately at the same spot on both sides. If you don't, not to worry. No one's gonna get out a ruler and measure it. So now we have these long tails. What we need to do is pull this back thread and that'll cause a loop for the front thread to come up and just pull it through. So pull the back thread, causes that little loop and pull it through. You'll do that for all the sides. And then we'll tie them off. And 
and this thread is not cooperating. There we go, it doesn't want to be tied. And I like to triple knot it, or even more than that, just to extra add some extra security. It's not knotting for me, I can't do it. My hands are not cooperating today. Now after you knot these, you can also add a dab of glue or some fray stop or fray check over it just to prevent them or for that extra security to make sure they don't come untied. The choice is really yours if you want to or not. So just keep tying all four and then once you have them tied, we'll trim the threads. And just be careful how tight you're pulling on these threads. I have had threads break as I was pulling them really tight. I've had threads break. You really don't want them to break on you as you're tying them. Then what happens is you need to unpick all those stitches again and re-sew. Not the end of the world, but just a little bit of a... Uh, makes things a little bit hard... Uh, more work for you, I guess, is the word I'm looking for if you do that. I'm going to cut these two that I've already tied because they're kind of getting in my way. So just trim those right above the knot. Just like that. Like I said, these knots will not be seen because we're going to be folding this in half once we put the D-ring on it and stitching it to the bag. So these knots will not be seen in the finished bag at all. Now if you're using a material here that's pretty busy and won't show back stitching, you could definitely back stitch here if you want. You don't have to take the time to tie all these knots because as you can see, it can be a little bit time consuming. So that's how that looks with the stitching on both sides, just these straight edges here. You're not stitching the heart itself. Now we're going to slide the D-ring on. So again, remember where your threads were that you tied off. That's the side that you want the straight edge of the D-ring on. You're going to fold this in half and you can use some double-sided tape here to help hold them together. So I'm just going to use a piece of double-sided tape. Oh, the fight to find the end of the tape. There it is. And you may be wondering what I'm doing. To get the tape to be easier to peel off, I create a little tab. So I fold it back onto itself, just like that. Pull the paper back. Sticking to my finger too much. Pull the paper back and that mean, that makes it so that the tape stuck to itself here and I have this little tab so that I can pull this off. Just like that. So I'm going to fold these so that the edges meet the bottom edges. Just like that. And yours may be glued, mine are lifting because they weren't glued on the edges and that's okay because I'm going to, we're going to top stitch these to the bag. So I'm just going to shift these around a little bit to make sure that they all get all lined up nicely and neatly. And if you have any edge code or anything that you want to use, you can use that on the edges of, the, of the, these um, connectors. You can finish them however you want so that they look finished and don't have the raw edges. And I'm just attaching some clips just to help hold it in place. And you'll repeat that for the second one. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to sew the second side 
tie the threads and then I'm going to loop my D-ring on like that and then we will come back and we will attach it to our gusset. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've finished the second one, finished the second one, so now I have two that look like this. So as I mentioned earlier, there's some marks you need to make on your gusset. Those you'll want to make now if you haven't already. We're then going to take the connectors that we just sewed and slipped the D-ring onto and attach it to the gusset. And the mark I made, I'm going to attach it at the mark right here at this part where the heart starts to take shape on these top curved edge. So you're lining up the line you made with this top curved edge, just like that. So I'm just going to use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place. <clears throat> And you can choose which side you think looks nicer. It both They both look the same for me on mine. But if you have one side that you think looks nicer than the other, oops, go ahead and choose that side to be the side you're going to see when it's placed on your gusset. So again, the side that is on this, I mean, the, where we're lining this up is where the heart, so where these little curved edges, so that go straight across that curved edge with the line we made and centered. So I have the center mark made. So I'm just going to make sure this stays centered and I'm lining it up with that mark I made. Just like that. So there's that line I made right here. It goes right across at the top of this heart where the curves are, straight across and this is centered. So we're going to do that for both sides, attach it to both sides, but I'm going to start with the one edge for now so that the other one isn't going to fall off as I'm stitching. And you may need to switch to a smaller presser foot, so I'm just going to see because you need to get as close to the hardware as you can, and I'm okay with that presser foot. But you may need to switch to a smaller foot in order to be able to get across the top here where the heart is, where the curves are. So you'll want to stitch these now so that you get a curved heart. And what you can do is take your chalk or a pen that you can use that's fabric safe and continue drawing this heart. So you have the shape of the heart so I've made it into a heart. So I've just drawn where the heart would go here. So basically the little center mark, I'll show you with this piece. So I've drawn this part of the heart onto the connector and I'm just going to follow that as I stitch. And again, don't back stitch, leave long thread tails. And when you, stitch around, you'll want to stop right back in that same hole that you started in. And if you have to take a smaller stitch length to get into that corner nicely, take a smaller stitch length. And for curves, what I like to do is take one stitch, lift with my needle down, sorry, Take one, lift up my presser foot and pivot. Sorry, that's really confusing. I'm like lost for words. What I do is I, with my needle down, lift up my presser foot, pivot my fabric a bit, put my presser foot back down, take one stitch, needle down, presser foot up, pivot slightly, one stitch, needle down, presser foot up, pivot slightly, one stitch, and keep doing that all the way around. Sorry, my brain wasn't thinking wasn't functioning there for you when I tried to explain it the first time. And you just keep going around, all the way around, to create that heart. sewing and this is going to take a little bit of time but that's okay trust me it is worth the time it's going to take and 
I'm approaching back where I had started. I'm coming back down towards that waist. So I'm just making sure my threads are not under my presser foot at this moment because I don't want to catch those. And I've stopped right back where I started. So lift my needle, pull on thread tails. Same thing we did when we were stitching these. Pull the threads through to the back and this is going to be a little bit hard for me because my fleece I really decided to make this one a little bit challenging for myself didn't I And again, as I mentioned previously, if you've used a material that you that you don't mind if you see the bit of backstitching because it's a busier material, go ahead and backstitch. So now I'm just tying them together. I put them in sets of two and I just tie them off together. so far so now we're going to and it's a little bit wonky now we're going to attach the second side it's a little bit wonky but I think I can smooth that out a bit there we go now we're going to stitch the other side and again to find the end of the tape it's always the fun part lining up that top curve of the oops, of the connector, the top curve of the heart, centering it and lining up that top curve of the heart with the line we made. And I'm going to mark that curve of the heart and I'm using this friction pen. because I can just wipe it off with water after. But now you can see that mark I made a little bit better just to create that heart. <clears throat> and I'm going to try a zipper foot just because this did give me a little bit of issues up at the top here. So again with the long tails, thing I had mentioned previously and I took an extra stitch in the corner just to make sure that that doesn't get any angled stitching definitely the winner for this. Again, making sure my thread tails that I started with are not going to get cut, caught, sorry, under my thread that I'm stitching now. just wipes away and you can see that looks much better the second heart looks much better I should have used my zipper foot the first time the other one doesn't look terrible it's just not what I would have liked it to look like it's really hard to see again because of the fleece that's attached to this there we go not these 
so I put them in sets of two. And then I just knot them together. And this is a thinner vinyl, even though the fleece is on the back, it is a thinner vinyl, so my machine didn't have a hard time stitching through it. And the vinyl I'm using for the connectors is thinner as well, so that made it really easy to stitch through. No skipped stitches. So there it is, that's how that looks. Both are attached, and re remember, one is going to be up slightly higher than the other. That is what you want. It will make sense when we go to construct the bag. So now we're going to put this to the side. We are going to move on. We need to grab the convertible backpack connectors if that's what you're choosing to do, if you're choosing to do the convertible backpack. I'm doing this because I wanted to show you how to construct this so that if you choose to do that option. There's some other options I won't be showing, but this I did want to show so that it is in a tutorial to show you how to do it. So you need your connector D pieces and you need to make a line down the center of each piece the entire length. Then we're going to add some double-sided tape. <clears throat> and if your tape is thick like mine, you'll be able to put it right down the entire center. If you're using a thinner tape, you'll want to put it on both sides of the line. Once you have the double-sided tape on, you'll remove the paper backing and you'll fold each long edge in to meet the center, just like that. so that they're both sides are folded in to meet the center. And we'll do that for the second one. This is really sticky double-sided tape. It keeps sticking to my nails. And then there's the second one. Now we need to top stitch both long edges of these connectors. So I'm going to switch back to my Teflon foot. And I forgot to mention before we continue, you can add a rivet to the center of these hearts. I will go back and I will add a rivet later. For now, I'm just going to continue on with these D-ring connectors. So stitch down both long edges. And for these, you can backstitch at start and stop. Trim all your threads. We don't want peekaboo threads later. take our D-ring. So we have some D-rings here. And I always like to put all my hardware for each bag I'm making inside a little Ziploc bag so it stays all together. So. Take your D-rings is staticking to me. Take your D-rings and put it onto your D-ring connector. Now you want to put the flat edge so that it's on the same side as the edge that you folded in. So you see the two edges folded in here. You want to put it on that same side. Fold it in half, put a clip on the end, repeat that process, slide the D-ring onto the end, onto the end of the D-ring connector, put a clip, and then we're going to base these raw edges together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. It's 
there we are. Now we're going to put these to the side. We need our back loop connector piece, so piece H, and it's the same process as we did for the D-ring connectors. Mark the center, add a piece of double-sided tape down the center, Fold it in to meet the center. And then we're going to top stitch these long edges. Same thing as we did for the D-ring connector. your threads. We don't want peekaboo threads. Peekaboo meaning they show up later, they poke through your seams later. Now we need to flip this so it is wrong sides up and the pretty sides is against your table. And there's a mark you need to make that's given in the pattern and I made mine already. And we need to fold this one edge just to that mark. I'm going to add some clips so I folded it to that mark. Then you're going to fold the other edge up just like that. So you have that folded down to where that mark is and you're going to fold this edge up. And I can see a thread there that didn't want to clip. I'm going to clip it away. There we go. And another one. I'm using thread that matches so good that I can't even see it when I'm clipping. So now we've mat we folded this to that mark that we made in the pattern. So there was a measurement given that you're supposed to make up from the bottom edge. I folded this edge down to meet that mark. Now I'm folding this up over that, that edge. So it'll look just like that when you're done. So we're going to set this to the side for a moment. We need to grab out one of our exterior pieces. So this is going to be your exterior back panel. And there's some marks that you need to make on your panel. I've already gone ahead and done that, but the measurements are given in the pattern from where you're going to make the marks. And these marks that you're making are for the D-ring and for the connector, this, um, what is this piece called again? Sorry, I forget what this is called, the back loop. There is marks for that. So you're going to align your D-ring connectors with the marks and the connectors facing inward. So your connectors will be facing in towards the bottom panel, in towards the panel. So we're going to place these at the top on our mark. So there's my mark right there. Place it at the mark. And I put this one, I think, on the wrong side of the mark. So there's my mark here. I'm placing this on the mark. And it's kind of crooked because I was trying to show you. So there's the mark here, and I've placed my connector there. So now we're going to base these in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And as you'll notice, I kind of went over it a few times. So 
So there's the connectors attached to the top of the bag. Now we need to attach this back loop and you'll need, with the bottom mark here, and you'll need to have some double-sided tape to hold it in place. Gotta find the double-sided tape. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the back to help hold that in place where we folded it. I don't need to worry about those clips anymore. And now we're going to take the bottom edge of this connector. So the piece here that's folded over, that's the side you want to put at the bottom and then against the, the, the uh, I was gonna say the machine, the bag. I'm just going to add some double-sided tape again. Remove the backing and then there's the mark I made so I need to find the center of this because I want this centered on my panel and I'm lining the bottom edge up with the line I made using the measurement given in the pattern. I'm just making sure it's centered. Now there's a couple of options. You can stitch this. I'm going to see if my machine will be able to stitch through all those layers. And you can rivet it. So I'm going to stitch it and then I'm going to rivet it provided my machine allows me to stitch this in place. And it did. I used a longer stitch length. I think that helped. So now I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to add some rivets. Don't add the rivets, you want this piece here loose. Don't add rivets there. Add rivets just through where we folded that small amount up. You're adding rivets through that. If you're stitching, you'll want to stitch so that you just stitch. So where this mark is, you may want to transfer the mark for this part here to this side so that it would be right there and you can stitch just there as well. So you'll have the bottom stitching and stitching there as well. And that'll help really secure this in place. But I'm going to go attach some rivets and then I will come back and we will continue on with constructing our bag. So I've gone ahead and attached rivets. If you don't have rivets, as I mentioned, you can sew straight across that edge there. You can also use Chicago screws, but that's how it looks. And that'll just add that extra security back there as well. And if you're worried about this edge being seen, you can go ahead and seal it with your favorite way of sealing. You can even just add some fray stop or fray check if you want. So just like this. Sometimes I find that that just a little bit extra just sort of helps prevent it if you're worried about any fraying or anything happening to the edges of your vinyl that's there. And there we go. That is now complete. We are done our back pocket, our back panel, sorry. Now I'm not doing the back pocket option, but I did kind of want to walk you through how to do it. And for this, I'm just going to use my lining fabrics here just so I can show you how to do it. So we'll imagine that these are the back pocket pieces because they are similar in how they are cut because they are hearts. What you will do is you will place them so they are pretty sides touching and you will align these top curves. You'll clip it all the way across and then you will sew this top edge, just these curves, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So you'll start here, you'll sew, come down, come back up and around and come down and stop. And just those top curves using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you've sewn that, you'll then make little snips into the curves here and that'll just help when you turn this right side out for the fabrics to spread to get a really nice curve when you turn it. Once you've done that, you'll turn these pieces so that they are wrong sides together. So we'll imagine that these are now flipped and sewn and wrong sides together. And you'll top stitch that top curve exactly where you stitched previously. You'll top stitch just that top curve and that's it. Once you have that top curve top stitched, you'll take your outer 
main, back main, so you wouldn't be able to do the pattern with the backpack connectors. You'd have to just do the crossbody option for this. However, if you really wanted to, I guess you could get away with it and it would be tucked inside your pocket, but it would kind of be a little bit wonky there. So what you'll do is you wouldn't have this piece, so we'll imagine that this is our back panel and you'll place your heart on your back panel just like that. So we'll imagine that this all lines up, you'll place it, you'll clip it down the sides and then you'll baste it in place to the back panel all the way here, that's it. So you've top stitched here and now you're basting this to the back panel. And that's how you make that heart for the uh, back heart pocket. And I just wanted to walk you through that even though I'm not doing that and that's because I'm doing this backpack option back here. I didn't want to do the um, front pocket, the back pocket. You could put that pocket on the front if you really want just to have a little cute little slip pocket on the front, but that is how you do it. Now we need to move on with our gusset and our gusset is the piece that we've already attached our two connectors to and we need our as I call it, top zipper. So I have a zipper pocket zipper and a top zipper zipper. So we need the top zipper. Sometimes that painter tape sticks to nothing and other times it wants to stick to everything. So now we need to take the zipper tape and we wanna align the zipper tape with the gusset wrong sides together. And it doesn't matter which side of the gusset because you're connectors here are centered so you're going to pin it in place and if you want you can use a strip of double-sided tape down the entire length of your gusset to help hold this in place so I'll show you use some double-sided tape all along your gusset I'm using a thinner tape so I have different widths of tape for different things I do and I keep them inside a ziplock too to help keep them sticky, keep the sticky power there remove the paper backing and then take your tape and align it with the raw edges meeting just moving to see if you can see so I have my side edge here aligned and then now I'm aligning the long raw edges of the tape with the gusset And you, if you have tape that's a little bit longer, if your tape, you cut it a little bit longer, that's okay. You can trim it after you sew it. And I'm just pressing it with my nail to make sure it's really stuck to the tape. Now, with that tape there, I don't need to use clips. Now I'm going to sew this to the gusset on top of the tape. And I'm just going to baste it in place. And where this zipper pull is, you'll want to lift it, you lift your presser foot up and zip your zipper pull out of the way. And that's because where the zipper pull is, it kind of creates a little bump in the zipper tape. So the zipper tape kind of makes room for that zipper pull. And you want to get rid of that so you don't get a wavy zipper. Trim my threads. Now we're going to add another piece of double-sided tape along the zipper tape.
the paper backing. And now we're going to place our lining gusset on top so that it is right sides against the wrong side of the zipper tape, but pretty sides are touching the exterior. Line up the short edges and then the long raw edges all the way across. Just push it against the double sided tape. And see where my zipper is, it doesn't really want to, our zipper pull is, it doesn't really want to stick down too well there. Now I'm going to add some clips just to really make sure none of this shifts on me while I'm sewing. So you have a zipper sandwich right now with the lining and exterior together. So you can see I've created a zipper sandwich. So the lining is against the wrong side of the zipper and the right side of the zipper is against the right side of my exterior. So now we're going to stitch this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And don't forget when you approach Oh, I need to switch up to my zipper foot, sorry. Don't forget to, when you approach that um, zipper pull, to move it out of the way. So make sure your, your, press, your needle is down, lift your presser foot up, and then slide the zipper pull out of the way and put your presser foot back down and continue sewing. <clears throat> and you definitely need a zipper foot here to get that accurate seam allowance. So there's that zipper pull. Needle down, press her foot up, zip the zipper pull out of the way. Oops. Just like that. Now we're going to fold these gussets so that they are wrong sides together, so they are right sides out. And then we're going to press this. Now I've used a vinyl for my exterior, so I'm going to have to press this from the lining side. So I'm going to go pause this video, I'm going to go press this on the lining side, add the clips along the bottom and we'll come back and continue on. I'm also going to change my foot back to my Teflon foot. So I'll go do that and then we will come back. All right, so I've gone ahead and pressed and I added some clips. I'm just gonna add a few more just because I like the edges to stay lined up beautifully. So now I'm going to top stitch this entire edge under the zipper here, all this edge, and I'm going to top stitch it. So increase your stitch length, to the length you use for top stitching. And I'm going slow here because I'm trying to make sure my vinyl stays flat. Sometimes I just whip through top stitching, but for this one, I want to keep that nice and flat under that seam. And when I approach where my zipper pull is, I'm just going to slide it out of the way because I don't want it dangling under my needle. That would be very bad. my 
my threads. Oops. Return my stitch length back to the length I like to use for stitching. So there it is, it's top stitched. I'm just going to stitch over the ends of my zipper tape just to make sure that when I'm sliding my pull around, it doesn't accidentally come off the end of my zipper tape. Just like that. Now that creates a little stop at the end so that when you pull your zipper pull towards there, that stitching will stop the zipper from coming off. So that's how that looks. Next, we need to grab our exterior, and I want to make sure I'm calling it the bottom gusset. So you have an exterior one and a lining one. So put the lining one to the side for now. So take your exterior, oops. Another thing is if you haven't already, you want to install your zipper pull onto your tape. I had had mine installed already. And this is where you can decide which way you want that zipper pull to go when it's closed or opened. Because I've already stitched here, it was because my pull was on. If your pull isn't on and you've stitched here, just unpick that with your seam ripper to unpick those stitches on the one side and put your zipper pull on the way you want it to be when it's closed. I'm also going to, after, um, I'm done installing the gusset. I'm going to go, or before I do the, the bottom gusset, I'm going to go off camera and install rivets. I forgot to do that here. So I'm going to go off camera and do that now. Put rivets inside these little D-ring connectors in the hearts. So I'm going to just pause the video quickly and go do that because once that's all done, this is all stitched and I won't be able to get in there after. So if you haven't, install your zipper pull now. And if you haven't already as well, install some rivets. And I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how to install a zipper pull onto a zipper tape. So I will link that below in the description. So check the description. So I'm just going to go install my rivets on this and then we'll come back and we will continue on. All right, so as you can see, I installed some rivets in the end and my zipper tape, or my pull is on my zipper tape. So back to what I was saying, we need to take our exterior bottom gusset piece and line it up with the short edge of the gusset with the attached zipper tape. So I'm just adding some clips back. So we're just going to place it so it is right sides together. Clip it in place. And because of the zip different zipper widths, in the pattern it's mentioned that if your gusset face piece, your bottom piece, is slightly smaller in width than this prepared gusset piece here with the zipper attached, just center it, it'll be fine. Sometimes you get zipper tapes that are just slightly different in width. So there's that. The exterior is now pinned right sides together or pretty sides touching the exterior side. We're going to flip this over and we're going to attach the lining side now. And if you want, you can do what I usually do, which is I usually baste this in place. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a row of basting stitches here just to help hold this in place. I always like to add the basting stitches. It just means I don't have to worry about anything shifting. So this is just an extra step I do. So there, I've just basted that and I'm going to trim my little threads. No peekaboo threads. Now we're going to take the exterior or the lining. So this would normally be clipped. So I'm going to put my clips back on. I'm going to take my lining and I'm going to place it pretty sides touching the lining side. So the lining pieces are right sides together. So you have your exterior bottom, your gusset, and your lining bottom. And the gusset piece with the zipper attached is sandwiched in the middle. So now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just like that. Trim your threads. And then we're going to press these fabrics so that they are wrong sides together. And I'm just finger pressing here. Wrong sides together. And we're going to top stitch this seam here. So this seam 
using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And just make sure everything is nice and flat. length back to my length I use for stitching. Now this is where it's going to seem, oops I sewed that upside down, this is where this is going to seem a little bit tricky or a little bit wonky but we will get through it I promise you. You're now going to take the assembled gusset piece, so this whole piece, and you're going to fold it in half so the short edges that have nothing sewn to it meet. You're going to clip your exterior right sides together so the exteriors are touching, pretty sides touching. Line everything up. And then we're going to baste this in place. I have this thread on my sweater here to get rid of. So now we're going to base this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky but I promise we will be able to do this. So you have this attached and we need to get the lining attached to this side here. Now you can just do what I did there which is just squish it all together which that works. So see, I would be able to sew this, I pin it and I'd be able to sew that and then I just turn it. Or you can do as mentioned in the pattern. So I need to remove all my clips. And what we're going to do is roll this up so it is lining sides out and then bring it, oops, sorry. Then we're going to bring the lining so that it meets with this edge. So I've just rolled it up and made like a little burrito. So I've just rolled it up. I'm going to clip it in place, lining up those short raw edges. Just like that and we have our little roll in the middle. It will be fine, we'll be able to do this. So you want to roll it, so I'm going to show you again. One more time. So when I roll it, I have it so my lining is against the table like this, my exterior against it, and this side of the lining facing up. So I'm not seeing the gusset side, the bottom gusset side right now. I'm looking at the half that's folded without the bottom gusset. I take it and just roll. Roll, 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 roll. And then when you get to the end, this will be loose. So you can bring it over and around to the side to fold it to the short edge or attach it to the short edge that the exterior gusset and bottom gusset are already attached together. Pin it in place and sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And it is going to be a bit of a tight squeeze but you can do it. I believe in you. If you're worried about this being a bit in the way this piece, use your zipper foot. That'll give you a little bit of extra room for sewing. So now we have this roll. Now we need to get everything out of the roll. So you can just push it through. So now we have it pushed through and it looks like that. I'm just going to take this piece and flip it just like that. Now we need to top stitch this second seam here. Just like we did on this one, we need to top stitch this side of the seam. So I'm just going to give this a finger press and I'm going to top stitch this. And because it's a loop, you can either put this through under your presser foot so that it's like this, or you can have it the other way. I'm going to go this way. for me. We turn my stitch length back to the length I use for stitching and there we have it. It is top stitched and we have this 
loop-de-loo right now for attaching to our main body. But we're not done with this. Now we're going to take that piece of interfacing that we cut. So you may have cut Peltex. I cut Decoville, um, Decoville Heavy. And we're going to slide it into the middle of this piece. And then we need to fuse it in place. So I'm going to go fuse this in place. So I've taken this, slided it in. And I'm going to go fuse that in place. And then we will come back and continue on. So that Pelta or that Decoville Heavy that I had, I fused it in. And I fused it to my lining so that I could press from this side and not touch my vinyl. Now we need to stitch these seams here. So this long bottom seam and this top seam here. So that they are closed and held together. So I'm going to add some clips. And I know every time the D-rings hit the table it's a little bit loud. I'm very sorry. Just pinning it just to help hold it in place so that I can base these edges that are open together. <clears throat> and when you baste, you can stick to using a longer seam stitch length. You don't need to use your regular stitching length that you use when you stitch a bag together. You just use your stitch length that you use for top stitching or even longer. So now I'm going to stitch those together. I'm just wondering if it gives me a no, tighter fit this way. So I'm increasing my stitch length and now I'm going to baste these together. just trimming all my threads now before I forget to do it later and then I'll do the same thing on the other side now and this is the long side so this is that long bottom edge of that gusset that we're basting together right now Basting the exterior and lining together. Oops. Better grab that before Buddy comes on my table and starts to play with it. you're probably wondering why I switched and started stitching on the lining side. Sometimes I find when I'm basting that sometimes my vinyls tend to shift and I get like pleats and such and it just shifts it and it doesn't become even anymore. So I find when I switch and with it so that the vinyl is against the bed of my machine and my lining is up that I don't get that shifting anymore. So that's just how I prevent that. So that's all basted together. We've basted this bottom edge and this top edge here. We're going to stick this to the side for now and move on. We now need our lining main panel A, one of the pieces, the zipper overlay, whichever zipper overlay you have chosen to do. And this is not very straight, so I'm just going to fix that. There we go. Guess my Cricut kind of went a little wonky there. And we need our zipper pocket zipper and we'll need our zipper pocket zipper piece here. So this is, I'm trying to see what piece this is. This is piece E you'll need and your overlay is the zipper overlay depending on which one you've chosen to do. I've chosen to do this one. So there is a mark in the pattern that you need to make from the top edge here, this top edge here down for where we're going to place the zipper overlay. So you'll want to make that mark now. Then we're going to take this zipper overlay and we're going to add some double-sided tape to it. 
So just here, we're going to add the double-sided tape. And you can add a little bit on the heart too if you want, if you're doing the one with the heart. So we're just adding some zip, some double-sided tape. So I'm removing the paper backings. First I'm going to fold this in half because we need to make this centered onto the panel. So I just fold it in half and I give it a little squeeze to press it to create a crease there. Remove the paper backings. Try not to have it stick to your nails like it's doing to me or your fingers. And we're going to line up the top edge of our zipper overlay with that line we made as well as it being centered. So line it up, make sure it's all centered, and that's how that looks. Now we need to stitch the outer edge of this overlay, and again, just like I did on my connectors, I'm going to create this little V in the center here so I know where to sew for that heart. So we're going to sew the outer edge of the connector all the way around, then we'll come back and sew the heart separately. So again, leave long tails. Start and when you start and stop, don't back stitch. these corners I'm doing the same thing I mentioned when I did our connectors lifting the presser foot up and taking one stitch at a time around that corner I want to make sure those threads are out of the way Approaching back where I started, so I'm going to start in the same hole I started, stop in the same hole I started in, pull my threads to the back, and I just should have held on to the one there. through. I'm probably going to have to take my needle and fish it through with a needle. Because I stopped and I guess it hit that other thread and now it doesn't want to come up. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yay. So now I'm going to tie these off, put them in a set of two and just tie them off. like that. Now I'm going to stitch the heart the same way I did with the connector. And I don't have any D-rings to worry about getting in my way so I can I don't need to switch to my zipper foot.
pull these to the back. them off. So it'll look just like that. Now we need to cut this fabric out of the center. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't cut your stitching and there's a measurement for how far away from the stitching you want to go and this doesn't have to be perfect the cutting and I'm just using some duckbill scissors because I feel like they get into the corners nicely or not into the corners, um, sorry, they don't get into the corners, they cut the fabric away nicely so that it, it keeps it, well it does cut into the corners nicely too, but it keeps it so that my exterior fabric, it keeps the exterior fabric away from what I'm cutting, it acts as a guard. And I do find it can cut into the corners nicely too. So it doesn't have to be pretty because we're going to be adding a zipper over that, but that's how it looks. So now we're going to place some double sided tape just above and below the zipper overlay opening. we're going to put that to the side for now we're going to grab our zipper pocket and our zipper tape I'm just going to move this and we need to put some tape onto the wrong side of our zipper and if you haven't already go ahead and install your pull so we're going to put some double-sided tape onto the wrong side of the zipper tape putting this on the wrong side of the zipper tape right now. to take the zipper pocket piece E and place it facing right sides up and you're going to align the top of the zipper so one side of the zipper with the top raw edge of the zipper pocket so that means remove the backing of the zipper tape or the double sided tape of one side and place it so that you align the top raw edges and I'm going to flip this so I can see And again, that zipper pull, you'll notice, causes a bit of a bump. So when we get to that part when we're sewing, we're just going to slide the zipper out of the way. We're going to baste this in place. So I'm where that zipper pull is. I'm just going to move it out of the way and then readjust this zipper tape to be even with the top edge. We need to take this edge of the zipper tape that's not attached to anything and bring it up to the other edge 
of the pocket, so the bottom edge. So bring it and fold it in half. Line up the edges, side edges and top edges. And we're going to base this one in place now. And again, I'm going to just slide my zipper pull out of the way so I can keep a nice straight edge. Slide it back out of the way. I want nice straight edges. And as I mentioned on the gusset, if you're worried about your zipper pull coming off your zipper tape, go ahead and remove or add some stitches to the ends here. Just back stitch over the ends and that'll prevent it from coming off when we're sliding it around. Now we need to grab back this lining main that we attached the facing to with the double sided tape. And you're going to remove the double sided tape bottom piece the backing of the double sided tape on the bottom and I'm just going to give this a press and you're going to lay the zipper pocket so that it is like this so that this sticks up and then we're going to place this centered over the zipper tape so you want it to be centered in the hole but also centered to your overlay Oops. So I just keep checking and I shimmy it around a bit. This pull is now stuck to the double sided tape. Fun, fun. Getting it undone. There we go. So shift it around and get it centered. Just like that. So it's centered. So this needs to stay facing up. Your pocket is pointing up right now. Now we're going to stitch just this bottom edge here using the seam allowance in the pattern and you're not going to back stitch. You're going to leave long thread tails just as we've done previously. And then we're going to tie them off in the back after. So start and stop. Leave the long tails, don't back stitch. And I've got my pull out of the way. I'm lifting up my presser foot to slide it back out of the way. Keep making sure that pocket stays up. And I know I'm not turning, but I want to make sure I have a nice even seam allowance here, which I do. Long tails. Pull them through to the back. Both sides. Tie them off. My thread just broke there, but I had already tied a few knots for a few times, so it's okay. But that's what I mean, sometimes when you pull too hard, your thread tends to break, so you need to be careful. That's what I was saying when we were tying it off previously. I think it was when we were doing the connectors. Now, we need to top stitch the top, so top edge, but also these sides. So we're going to now pull the pocket so that it is down. We're going to remove that double sided tape backing and again make sure that you have this all lined up and that nothing has shifted on you. So with the pocket down and what I like to do to make sure the pocket stays down is I like to place a few pins inside or on the pocket through the lining and the pocket and that'll just help keep it down out of your way. So now we're going to stitch up the one side across this top edge and back down the other side. No back stitching. So again, long tails. 
start and stop in the start and stop spot that you did when we previously stitched. Again, that pocket is down out of the way. I'm going to zip my zipper pull out of the way. right where I started previously. Long thread tails. And we're going to pull these through to the back and tie them off. And as I mentioned previously, if you're using something that's busier, that the back stitching won't be seen as much, you could back stitch if you want. You don't want to be doing this tying off stuff or maybe you don't mind the back stitching at all this type of stitching where you leave long tails is great when you're stitching a strap so you run out of bobbin or your stitching kind of goes a little wonky and you want to fix it but you don't want to have to restitch the whole strap you can unpick some stitches all the way back and then tie it off pull it through the seam so you always have a seam on the strap pull it through the seam with a needle and then cut it off and then do the same thing start leave long tails tie it off pull it through the seam and then continue stitching I've had to do that many times so that's how the pocket is looking so far so we've stitched the pocket to the overlay so we have our little pocket here now we need to trim the pocket so that it is out of the seam allowance but also takes the shape of the heart. So I'm going to trim this. And it doesn't have to be exact, just as long as you have it so that it won't be in your seam allowance. Add some clips. trimmed it. Now I'm going to sew the sides of the pocket closed, making sure I'm moving my lining out of the way. And you can back stitch here because this stitching is not going to be seen. There's one side. always worried if my stitching is perfectly straight on a pocket because it doesn't ever get seen. So there it is. We've attached our pocket. We have this cute little pocket. I've trimmed the sides, sewn up the sides, and I've made my pocket. I'm going to move the zipper pull so that it's in the center of the bag because it is dangly. I don't want it accidentally getting into the seams. So I'm going to set this aside. So we're going to move on to the final assembly. And for the final assembly, you have an option of adding some drippy panel piece here, or you can add this overlay on the front with an applique so that it gives it more of a frame look. You can do whatever you want. You can do some embroidery on this. However, if I was you, I would embroider your piece first and then cut it to size. Or if you're going to do quilting, again, cut a big piece, do your quilting, then cut your shape to size. So it's really your choice. The applique and the drippy, or the applique, the frame, sorry, and the drippy, what you'll do is you'll put it on here. So say this was my drippy piece. I'd put it on and I'd stitch at, with the seam allowance given in the pattern away from the edge and then baste it at the top as well. Just like the frame, if you have the frame on it here, you would stitch the outer edge of the frame and then stitch the inner edge of the frame. If you want to add a label here, now is the time. There is a measurement given for the label. So next we need to take our outer and lining main pieces and clip them wrong sides together. She has a note that the side with the interior pocket should be added to the back panel of the bag. 
So this is my back panel, because remember I'm making this the backpack bag. So I'm going to clip the pocket to the back. And again, sorry about those sounds. And I do have my tops and bottoms marked here, so I'm lining up those center points. Just clipping it all the way around. And then I'm going to baste these together. So now we're going to base these outer edges together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And see this is where my lining is or my exterior is sort of shifting on me. It's not staying the way I wanted it to as I was mentioning before. So I'm going to go on to the lining side to base this in place. there's some marks you need to make from the pattern and you're going to make the marks on your lining so I've already made those marks I can't really see this one well I can but so I've made the marks within my seam allowance so just like that and these are where the gusset is going to line up so that bottom part of your gusset so now we're going to take this, lay this right sides up. We're going to flip this gusset so the lining is out. And you want to place this against the back of the bag, but we're going to have it so that it's the side without the zipper going against the back of the bag here. So I'm going to find those marks and I'm going to line this up with those marks that I made. And then what I'll do is I'll pin the rest of the way. So those two marks, I've lined this up and then I'm going to pin the rest of the way. And this shifted a little bit for some reason. The interfacing has shifted. So I need to open this up and adjust that. I guess it didn't fuse completely and part of it is shifted or it's come undone since I was sewing. So I'm going to go fix that interfacing because it's shifted on me and I will come back and we will continue on. I'm going to unpin this. So I'm just going to go fix that interfacing and come back. Okay, so I've adjusted that interfacing so that it's not in my seam allowances. It's probably when I was ironing it, I guess, it shifted. So back to what I was saying, we're lining up the base gusset with those marks you made from the pattern piece. And I'm just lining them up. And then I'm going to pin it the rest of the way. Following that curve. And I'm using a lot of clips to help hold this in place. 
And then we're just going to continue pinning this gusset all the way around, following those curves. So I'm going to pin a little bit up this one side till I get to the top of the heart here. Or not the top, the side before the top of the heart. I'm going to pin this side. And this is just going to help me make sure it's evenly spread out through the gusset and onto the exterior. So I'm going around this first curve and then I'm going to stop just after the D-ring. So make sure your D-ring is pointing down into the lining of the exterior between the exterior gusset and exterior panel. And I'm a little bit concerned that I might have chosen the wrong material for that D-ring connector. I might have some problems with the bulk, but we will see. Also, when we're done trimming this, my D-ring connectors, and yours will be the same, are not perfectly lined up with that top edge. So I'm just going to trim them so they are. This will help when we go to attach our binding. It'll just make it easier when those edges are all aligned. So now we're forcing the gusset to go down into this top curve of the heart. Keep pinning or clipping whatever it is that you're doing. Just keep on clipping. As Dory would say, instead of swimming, keep on clipping, keep on clipping. Follow that curve. I'm gonna add a lot of clips. All the clips want to come to this part. I thought we had a man down. I thought one of my clips broke. Now we're going to make some snips into the curves of the seam, into the seam allowances of the curves. I was saying that backwards. This will help the fabrics spread open and lay flatter so it makes it easier for you to stitch this to the bag. So we're going to make some clips. If you feel you need to add more clips, like I'm kind of feeling here, go ahead and do that. I really don't want anything shifting on me. So make some snips into those curves, just within the seam allowance. Don't go any further. And you're not going right up to the edge of the seam allowance. You're just going just under the seam allowance. don't want to trim where the D-ring connector is because that's where it's connected. It's basted in place right now. And I'm just snipping between each of these clips. So I'm just sliding a clip over a little bit, getting my scissors in there and making a snip. Might be a bit excessive, but that's how I'm doing it. I want to remove this clip just so I can snip here. If you're worried about sewing curves, there is the trick to staple your curves together. Just be careful when you're sewing with the staples there because you do not want to hit a staple. You can also use some double-sided tape to help hold everything here together if you have enough double-sided tape. Alright, this is pretty much a straight edge. Now I'm going to come down here and snip this all. also going to grab out my extension table before we start sewing this because this is going to naturally want to drop off the edge of my machine 
and to prevent that from happening, my extension table will hold it up. And just making sure I made enough snips. I mean, you could snip around the entire outer edge of this fabric if you want. We're really almost done. It's just attaching these panels now and adding our binding. All right, so now we're going to stitch this in place carefully using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'm going to start on a straight edge here. Make sure your stitch length is at the length you like to use for stitching seams or constructing your bags. This is where switching to a bigger needle might be helpful. Make sure that D-ring, when you're coming over it, is down out of the way. You don't want to hit that D-ring as you're stitching. And another tip, try not to remove any of your pins or clips until your presser foot is right against it. If you're using pins, you can even hand crank over them instead. don't want it to shift on me so I'm just re-pinning that and I'm going to come back back stitch and then continue just shifting up the clip a little bit just enough so that my presser foot can get past it D-ring again, making sure it's down, and I'm so happy I used a thinner vinyl because it seems to be okay stitching over that. Alrighty. Okie dokie. Now we're going to trim those threads. Just going to check and see how it's looking so I'm just turning it out checking to see how it's looking if there's any pleats or anything that I need to remove I will unpick some stitches and remove those pleats so pretty eh and I used this embossed vinyl I love it so I'm going to push that back so that it is aligning sides out now we're going to attach our binding and I use a different method than what's given in the pattern. You can use whatever method you prefer to use for attaching your binding to your bag. I do have a small tutorial on my YouTube channel for using binding. I will link that below in the description. So I'm just going to attach my binding and I'm going to start on a straight edge. And usually I use double-sided tape to help hold this in place. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to apply double-sided tape to the whole one side of this bag. And again, I do this a little bit different because I'm using the quilting cotton. I made my own bias tape. You can buy pre-made, you can use fold-over elastic, you can use uh, canvas, you can use whatever you want. I'm really excited about this bag. I think it's so cute. I may just have to use it for the next couple of days. Not that I have anywhere to go, but when I do, I'll have a cute little Valentine's Day bag. This would 
would be really cute too for if you had somewhere dressy to go you could really make a dressy little bag and it'd be like a cute little accessory for whatever you're wearing so I'm just trimming those d-ring connectors so they go with the shape of the bag because that's going to cause my binding to shift out of the way so now I'm just making sure that this double-sided tape is completely adhered before I start pulling off the backing backing of the tape whipped so now oops what's going on here okay I'm pulling some of the paper backing away now I'm going to start attaching so the center of my binding is going to go right against that seam just like that and I'm just sticking it on and the double-sided tape is holding it in place you can use some clips too which I will when we flip this over I will add some clips the backing keeps ripping it's not staying seamless so here I'm on the corner where the bottom edge is where that curve is so I just stuck her down and the beautiful thing about binding is you don't really notice it as much inside a bag so it doesn't have to be stitched 100% perfect there can be little areas that may not be perfect nobody's going to notice unless there's some little binding police coming around checking your binding I have yet to meet them and if I did, they would say that my binding is often not very nice. But I do enjoy binding bags because it adds like a skeleton to the bag. It gives it more structure on the exterior of the bag because it helps hold those seams and it gives it that little bit of structure on the exterior of the bag. So I really, I really do enjoy binding. It's a different method to get a different look. So now I'm back at the end here and I need to fold this. So I need to trim this a little bit. Hopefully there's enough for the other side. Let's see quickly. I just want to see. If not, I'm going to have to stop the camera and go back and create more binding. Oh yeah, there's plenty for the second side. Now, for me, what I do is I open this up. I press one side to the wrong side. And then I press this towards the open edge here. around so that it looks seamless I'm just going to place a clip there to help hold it in place so that's the one side now sometimes I add double-sided tape to the second side but I'm not going to I'm just going to clip it all around and again I do have a tutorial with more details on doing binding on a bag and I will link that below in the description there goes that wonder clip I think that's the first one I've dropped today which is a record for me because I usually drop a lot now we're going to stitch this in place all the way around you can use a stiletto to help hold these down as well that will be helpful I'm just going to 
try to find my stiletto, which I never can, so I'm going to use my awl if I need it. And I'm starting on this side edge here. And I'm using the same seam allowance given in the pattern for sewing this. And you can see I've stitched both sides. I'm going through both sides because that double-sided tape is holding that side underneath down for me. for me. I was a little bit worried about that after I realized when I cut that that I should have went with a different material. But it worked! Woo woo! on both sides. I've sewn the binding on. Just going to move my extension table because now, oh, wrong. Now we need to attach the remaining sides together. So you're going to attach the lining to this exterior piece, same way we did previously. There's those marks again that you need to make to line everything up. So once you have this stitched, you'll make those marks. I should actually be clipping the exterior to the lining here. And I'm going to sew again from the lining side so that this doesn't shift around on me. increasing my stitch length because it is a basting stitch. to repeat to attach this to this remaining side that has the zipper. Now again there's those marks that you made so you need to pay attention to them because that's where the bottom gusset is lining up. Again pin it all the way through. I'm going to pin it up this side until I get to the curve where the curve starts on the heart. curve and I will add more clips after I'm done pinning. I'm just trying to get this clipped for now. Now you can snip through the seam allowance here however I don't like adding snips to my zipper tape. This is just a personal preference because I've had issues with doing that in the past. 
So I will not be adding snips to the curve where the zipper tape is. I'm just going to work with it and help it curve as I'm sewing along. Again, personal preference because I have had past where my bag has come undone where I made snips in the zipper tape. So the zipper tape started fraying on me and it came completely unraveled. And it was very disappointing because I was away on a trip and it happened to me and then it happened to my daughter's bag. Same thing right at the top where the zipper was. And we were very upset. We had to go buy some stuff to just for me to just kind of tack it together temporarily till I got home to be able to fix it and actually I was never able to fix my daughter's bag and mine I got it just temporarily fixed and now that bag sits in my closet and I'm afraid to use it because I don't want it to come apart one day I'll probably take it apart and just restitch in a new zipper so that it can be used again so back to what we were doing not going to snip where the zipper is however I am going to snip at the bottom here into this seam allowance just to help that lay flat and I'm going to sew with my main panel against the bed of my machine so main panel against the bed of my machine starting on a straight edge and I'm just going to sew all the way around same way we did when we attached the first panel. And don't be afraid to squish that bag. Because you can repress it later. Get all the little squished marks out. I use a cork to stick the sharp end of my awl into so that I don't get hurt when I reach into my little thing that holds all my pens and everything. I don't know where I put my stiletto. I'd like to know where I put it though. So I'm where my zipper tape is, I'm just or my zipper pull is, I'm just gonna slightly move it out of the way till I get past where it is and then move it past the zipper foot or the uh, presser foot. So presser foot up, zip that zipper pull out of the way. And this is a little bit trickier because you're zipping it from the wrong side. going to try not to open that zipper tape as much as I can. There we go. I like to do this with my zipper tape zipped closed. If you find it easier to have your zipper tape open, please do that. just helping hold the zipper tape even with the edge of the main panel. Just acting as extra little fingers so my hands can be out of the way. Out of the way of the needle and the presser foot. I'm going to, ooh, I'm just going to restitch over this area a little bit with it facing this way because that's a little bit wonky. I 
guess when I was trying to move the zipper pull, it kind of pulled it. So I just want my zipper tape to be nice and even down here. There we go. That just cleans that up. It got a little wonky there. Kind of went me -ee -ee -ee, like that. So I'm just checking the rest. Everything looks great. Now we can go to adding the double-sided tape again and binding this side the same way we did this side. So I'm going to go do that off camera because I don't feel you need to sit there and watch me do another side of binding because you did see me just do this side. So I'm going to go off camera. It's the same thing, even though there's the zipper tape here, it's the same method to attach it. So I'm going to go do that and come back and we will continue on. So I've attached the binding to the side with the zipper here. So it's all attached. Now we're going to turn this so it is right sides out. that it adds a bit of a skeleton to the bag it kind of helps hold that in shape it helps hold it up and gives it some shape and some structure the binding and you can just keep pressing this out you can also put clips on your seams after if you want to help really press them and hold them in place after which is what I might do and then I will be taking my pictures And then this side here, you can either leave this seam alone or we can top stitch. So I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to wrap some tape around those just to sort of stop them from smashing and making loud noises. Careful not to touch my vinyl because vinyl does the tape could peel off the vinyl, I worry about that. So I'm just adding the tape to these rings just to make it so that when it hits the table, see when it hits the table? Oh, it still makes a noise. Oh, that's kind of a waste of time. All right, well, we'll leave those two that I taped. So what you wanna do is push the binding so it goes in towards the lining so you're pushing it this way in towards the lining and you can add some clips my clips aren't quite big enough to really reach that far but i'm making it work go all the way around and we're going to top stitch this with the binding being top stitched down in towards the lining and we're going to go really slow when we top stitch this my extension table increase my stitch length and I'm just turning this so that the exterior piece here is flipped up like that so I can get the stitching there as close as I can check my bobbin as well just to make sure I still have a full bobbin which I do and another thing you can do the same thing we've done on previous pieces where we don't backstitch we leave long threads. if you don't want to have backstitching on the front this is an excellent option which is what I will do 
because I really don't want that back stitching on this vinyl. So I'm just taking my time to make sure that that binding stays under and I'm stitching through all those layers. Curves is where it gets a little tricky because you're trying to go around the curve and hold everything in place. here too if you find a stiletto is helpful. Stuck. Part that may be the trickiest part yet because you've got the bottom of your heart that you're trying to stitch through that's attached to the gusset. Just take your time on this part. If you have to hand crank a few stitches, hand crank. I just kind of help my machine. Just to make sure it catches that bobbin thread. are going to come to the back and I'm going to tie them off here.
Now the top stitching is optional. I do like it because it's going to help hold the binding out of the way of that seam so that I don't accidentally hit it every time you open and close the bag. Oops. So it is kind of a nice option to top stitch, but if you're worried that your machine can't handle sewing through all that extra bulk, you can just omit the top stitching and just leave the bag finished as is with the binding attached and then you would just turn it out. So there we go. Oops, I can't get these scissors. Snip my threads. Push this all back out. I'm going to remove this tape. I thought it would help. It didn't. It was worth a shot, right? Now it's sticking to this really well, of course. Rubbing alcohol. If there's any stickiness, rubbing alcohol will get it off. I'll just have to be careful not to touch the vinyl because we don't know how rubbing alcohol will be with vinyl. But it all came off. easy. Look at how beautiful that looks. So now I'm going to clip my strap to it. And if you're making this into the backpack, what you're going to do is fish this through this loop and then bring the straps up and connect them to the back of the bag and I do need to give this a little bit of a press but that's okay I will add my clips and press it all the way around so that it holds its shape better so that's how the backpack would look and you would loosen this off as loose as it can go to be able to fit around your shoulders or whoever shoulders you've made this for just like that you have your backpack so this will sit flat against your back and the straps will come up over your shoulders if you're doing the crossbody strap you can connect it to the side connectors You can also wear this just as a shoulder bag, but then you can adjust it and make these longer to make it a crossbody bag. So there it is. The Heartbreaker bag is all done. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up some tips and tricks along the way. Before you take your bag out to show it off to the world, don't forget to take some photos and share them on social media and use the hashtags given in the pattern. Again, I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up some tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for sewing with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.